My challenge! In 1846, Lower Manhattan's District of Five Points is violently fought over by dozens of street gangs looking to carve out a section for themselves. In the catacombs beneath the city, a man prepares for a fight while his son assists him in preparations. Priest Valen teaches his son Amsterdam that their guardian Saint Michael is the one who casts Satan out of paradise. Valen is the leader of an Irish Catholic gang called the Dead Rabbits, who are preparing to meet their rivals in battle. Amsterdam has been raised around his father's lieutenants and killers like Happy Jack Mulraney, Hellcat Maggie, and McGloin. Before getting to the battlefield Amsterdam is joined by his friend Johnny, while Valen is confronted by a mercenary named Walter Monk McGinn, who only agrees to fight for the Dead Rabbits for 10 shillings a notch. The gang exits the brewery and enters Paradise Square to begin a territorial war with the natives, a mob of those already born inside the United States and led by their Protestant leader, Bill the Butcher Cutting. The recently arrived dead rabbits are only 30 strong compared to the natives' hundreds, but have garnered the aid of other foreign gangs. With formalities out of the way, the two sides meet in a bloody battle for the ownership of Lower Manhattan's Five Points, while the children watch and take notes from the sidelines. The two teams slaughter each other with Valen and Bill equally making easy work of their rivals, while Monk keeps count of his new notches and Kitty collects ears. Bill announces himself approaching Valen from behind out of respect but quickly stabs him in the stomach when he turns, finishing him off with a second knife to the side. Valen's son witnesses his father's defeat while Cutting gets the attention of all the dead rabbits with the sight of their dying leader, concluding the fight. Bill puts Priest out of his misery and orders Valen's body be buried with honor and untouched, but not before Monk takes the money he is owed. Bill tells the natives to make sure Amsterdam receives a good education, but the child snatches the knife used to kill his father and races off. Johnny protects his friend while the now orphaned Amsterdam makes it into the caves and buries the blade, hoping to retrieve it later for revenge. He is found and taken to the orphanage, while Bill declares the dead rabbits outlawed and that no one shall ever speak their name again. Sixteen years later and the boy Amsterdam has grown into a man, returning home to a 1962's New York and seeing that McGloin is now one of Bill's lieutenants, spending his days throwing rocks at the Irish immigrants who arrive from the boats, having previously been one himself. The whole North has just abolished slavery which the natives are against, and are on the verge of conscription into Lincoln's army. Bill meets with Boss Tweed who owns half of New York and offers to form an alliance between their two houses, as Tweed requires muscle to do his dirty work but doesn't want his own people to be involved. Amsterdam arrives back in five points and goes to the old brewery to recover the knife, having remained untouched all these years. His identity is then discovered by a grown-up Johnny, who recognizes his St. Michael pendant and thought Amsterdam to be dead this whole time. The two reunite where Johnny fills him in on all the current gangs, saying that the shirt tail gang who once assisted his father in fighting the natives are now a bunch of dandies. Hellcat Maggie is now homeless but still claiming victims' ears as payment to support her drinking problem. None of the new gangs have the same dirt that the dead rabbits once had, and Johnny says that the name hasn't been spoken in years, while Monk is shown to now own a barbershop in the center of town. Amsterdam meets a lady who bumps into them named Jenny Everdeen, a turtle dove that he is attracted to and who slips away after successfully pickpocketing Johnny's timepiece. A turtle dove's a thief who parades as a housemaid to walk straight into affluent homes, robbing them blind. That night a building burns down, and with 37 amateur fire brigades in town, they fight each other just like any other street gangs. Amsterdam and Johnny run inside the building to burgle it for anything they can sell, when seeing Bill arrive with his own fire brigade a little late. With potential for the fire to spread, the crowd begins breaking into the untouched neighbors' homes to rob them preemptively. Johnny takes the new guy to meet Shang, a fence who works for the natives and employs Johnny and his friend Jimmy Spoils. Suddenly Happy Jack walks in, now a corrupt city constable and not recognizing Amsterdam, he strong arms what he wants from their hall before leaving. Jack is as feared as anyone in town, and is shown to be able to leave his valuables anywhere in the five points without the fear of it being stolen. Johnny is sent to deliver the resulting valuables to Bill and takes Amsterdam along with him, where Bill the Butcher has many dead rabbit loyalists now under his control, and even has a shrine in memory of Valen on the wall. Bill meets the new kid but isn't impressed when he notices that he struggles to look him in the eyes. The Butcher sends Johnny off on a mission while telling him to bring the new guy as backup, having noticed him save Johnny's life earlier during the house fire. Ships arrive back into the city carrying the bodies of those who have died in the war, and the boys are tasked with looting their corpses as they arrive. Noticing that the ship has already been looted by a gang called the Daybreak Boys, they see that the captain has also been murdered. So Amsterdam comes up with the idea of taking his corpse and selling it to the medical school, dubbing them the Ghoul Gang to the newspapers and making Bill proud. Amsterdam even teaches Bill the pronunciation of the word Ghoul, having been put into a better education than Bill ever had himself. 
Against the idea of robbing from corpses McGloin challenges the kid to a fight, where Amsterdam handily defeats the old veteran and almost fish hooks him. With Bill impressed by the new guy's ability to defeat one of his lieutenants, he begins to induct him into the gang. Hearing from Tweed that they need someone to pin all the crimes on Bill protects his young assets and nominates four other poor sods to be hung in town square to appease the crowd. Whoopsie daisy! Monk is shown to still have heavy tension with Bill even after all these years, subliminally telling the native that someday soon they will fight. Amsterdam learns that each year the natives celebrate the anniversary of the five points battle victory with a ceremony. While working his way into Cutting's inner circle, Amsterdam is given many chances to kill him, but saves it for the ceremony to give Bill a public execution. The ghoul gang attend a dance at the old brewery, they play a game where Jenny is picked to choose a guy from the crowd to dance with and chooses Amsterdam. They dance for a short time and then go straight outside to fool around, but he quickly loses interest in her when he discovers that she is one of the Butcher's regular girls. Relations begin to sour between Butcher and Tweed, as Tweed wants more immigrants for his mayoral vote, while Butcher sees them as the enemy and relies on native votes only. Tweed backhandedly threatens Butcher as he walks away but quickly recants his words when confronted. While the crowd is pelting Lincoln during a performance of Uncle Tom's Cabin, Amsterdam thwarts an assassination attempt that leaves Bill wounded. He is the only one helping Bill and fatally shoots the assassin, and the gunman bleeds out before the Butcher can discover who he's working for. After Bill thanks his savior in front of the whole city, Amsterdam realizes he acted more out of honest devotion to Bill than from his own plan of revenge. He is approached in secret by Monk, who admits that he knows who Amsterdam is, and that whatever he is planning he needs to be smart about it. Both Bill and Amsterdam retire for the night, and Jenny nurses the wounded native back to health. Later on Amsterdam confronts Jenny over Bill and they have an argument, but it soon turns to fooling around again. Amsterdam wakes in the middle of the night to find Bill menacingly sitting by his bed. But he is fine with Jenny being there and just tells Amsterdam about the only enemy he ever fought who was worth remembering. Priest Valen beat him in a fight long ago and left him to live with a shame, so Bill cut his own eye out for whatever reason and rose up with his gang the natives, to finally defeat Valen on that fateful day. He credits Valen for making him the man he is today, and tells Amsterdam that he has come to look upon him as the son he never had. The kid is ready to kill the butcher, but Johnny traitors on him and reveals his plan to Bill. The night of the ceremony Bill is giving tribute to his long-fallen enemy Valen, while ready for anything, when Amsterdam attempts to throw a knife at him but Bill deflects it and counters with a knife of his own. Bill says that he is unworthy of the Valen name for coming at him from the shadows instead of offering him to a fight, then repeatedly headbutts him as the crowd cheers. The butcher melts the side of Amsterdam's face and lets him live with his shame as his father once did him. Jenny nurses Amsterdam back to health and tries to convince him to leave New York and go to San Francisco with her, when they are unexpectedly visited by Monk. He gives Amsterdam the straight razor that belonged to his father, which is what he had taken 16 years ago in the street for safekeeping. Once recovered, Amsterdam walks out in front of everyone and places a dead rabbit on a fence in Paradise Square. After it finds its way back to Bill, he sends Happy Jack to personally find out who sent the message without involving the police. While searching an abandoned church Amsterdam ambushes and chokes him out, before hanging his body up in Paradise Square. Johnny makes up with Amsterdam and wishes he could take back what he told Bill, but is told he must leave town or else his friend must kill him. Bill sees Jack strung up and thinks it shows real courage from Amsterdam, but valued Happy Jack's contribution to his cause more than most and must retaliate. Before Johnny can leave New York McGloin catches him and brings him to Bill, who has him run through with an iron pike in Main Street and left like the dead rabbit, so Amsterdam puts him out of his misery. With 15,000 Irish pouring into New York every week, Amsterdam builds the dead rabbit's numbers back up to rival even the natives. Boss Tweet approaches Amsterdam wanting to garner Irish votes for his candidacy for mayor, but it is only agreed upon under the conditions that Tweet support Monk in an election for sheriff. Bill's native candidate and Monk go back and forth at the polls, until eventually Monk wins by more votes than there are voters, having been completely rigged by Tweed. In response to this Bill shows up at Monk's barbershop. Knowing Monk is now a man of peace and won't engage him in a fight, Bill throws a meat cleaver into his back while he walks away, then gives him his last ever notch before killing the new sheriff. At Monk's funeral, Amsterdam passes the natives standing around laughing and issues a challenge to Bill, which he accepts. Challenge accepted. The Irish gang leaders and the native leaders meet to discuss the rules of engagement, coming to the traditional rule of no guns. With tension around the New York City drafts finally boiling over, riots break out and many upper-class citizens are slaughtered by the poor. Jimmy is jumped by a group of rioters and killed, while Jenny is attacked by muggers and has to shoot a woman who pulls a knife. Union soldiers enter the city and begin slaughtering the rioters, as the dead rabbits and the natives meet for battle one last time. 
Suddenly shells fired from Union ships sitting in the harbor begin raining down directly into Paradise Square. The crowds are dispersed, but Amsterdam and Bill look for each other in a cloud of dust and debris. They exchange blows in the haze before getting thrown to the ground by another shell blast. When the smoke clears, Bill wakes to see McGloin being shot down by the Union soldiers. And Amsterdam wakes to Shang being beaten to death by them. Amsterdam looks down to see that the butcher has been hit by a piece of shrapnel in the stomach. Bill says thank god I die a true American, then lets Amsterdam finish him off. He dies with his hand grasping Amsterdam's and a knife in the other, easily being able to kill the kid if he had wanted. It took four days until the riots were finally quelled, and the dead are laid out in the middle of the five boroughs for friends and family to identify them. Bill is buried in view of the Manhattan skyline right next to Priest Valen, while Amsterdam says that history will be like they were never even there. And the movie ends. So you made it. I appreciate your time. I couldn't have done it without you. Tell your mother I said thanks.